Welcome back to Organic Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss radical bromination of hydrocarbons. In fact, this actually, these topics come from the radical chapter that you see in organic chemistry textbooks. Radicals are important for a lot of reasons, but there's one very important reason that you use them in synthesis. One functional group that is incredibly unreactive to pretty much everything are alkanes. Um, in fact, alkanes, just straight alkanes, with no, no groups attached to them, no bromines, no halogens, no hydroxyls, nothing. Straight alkanes are virtually useless unless you can radically brominate them. Um, we won't really see any reactions any reactions for the rest of organic chemistry where you can actually react alkanes, not that I can think of off the top of my head. And so the only thing you can really do to them is you can radically halogenate them. Here's an example of a radical halogenation right here. So this is actually propane. It's a three carbon alkane. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do it at room temperature approximately. We're going to use Br2, which is just diatomic bromine, and light, H nu, I don't know why they have a gamma there, but H nu or light, whatever. And we're actually going to brominate um, some position on the propane. Now, when you're looking at it theoretically, statistically, you actually should brominate the primary position because it's least sterically hindered. Um, this position right here, which is actually this one right here, or on the other side, these are primary carbons. And so you would think that would be what you'd brominate, and then the least bromination would occur on the middle carbon, which is secondary because it would be more sterically hindered. And you would predict that maybe 75% of it would be on the primary carbon due to steric concerns, and the other 25% would be on the secondary. It turns out that's not the case, that's not even close to the case. In reality, we actually see the vast majority of bromination on the secondary position, okay, versus the primary. And the general rule of thumb for radical bromination is that the highest degree position is always what's brominated. So if we're comparing primary, secondary, or tertiary, particularly the tertiary is selectively brominated. If we don't have a tertiary position, then any secondary will be preferentially brominated. Okay, so you just basically look at the carbon atom with the most carbon substituents, and that's the one that gets brominated. Okay, we'll look at specific examples of this in the examples at the end of this video, okay, after we look at the theory. Now, you can, in theory, also do radical chlorination. Chlorination is not as useful. Um, this is because chlorination is really not as specific, and so you usually end up with a mixture of products which you do not want. Bromination, although you get 3% primary, bromination is much more specific and therefore much more useful in synthesis. So whenever we want to radically halogenate an alkane, we never use chlorine. It's typically introduced that way in organic chemistry textbooks, but they'll quickly move on and you'll use bromine for the rest of the time. You typically do not want um, radical chlorination unless your specific molecule like chloroform or something that you're trying to make, unless you want chlorine. But you'll never do that with, you know, for most syntheses you don't use that. We're going to radically brominate. Okay. Another rule, we do not radically fluorinate. Fluorine really does nothing. We're not going to really use it in organic. Um, and then we also do not radically iodinate. So the only thing we're going to use is radically brominate. We're only going to do radical bromination. Okay, And this is very useful for getting alkanes to be reactive. Okay, So we turn it into a bromoalkane. In this case, this is 2-bromopropane. Now, we can also do a type of bromination on alkenes and carbon chains attached to benzene. To do that, we're going to use this molecule right here, which is called N-bromosuccinamide, or NBS. If you see me right in the next part of this video, NBS, that's this molecule right here. And we can brominate at positions adjacent to the double bond, okay, as shown in this product right here. Don't worry about this, we're going to cover that much later. But we would brominate at a position adjacent to that double bond, okay? Now, we can also brominate at positions adjacent to a benzene ring. 
the position adjacent to or allylic to, as we would say, the benzene ring is right here where my mouse is. So if we use NBS, we can brominate at that position. Okay, now you'll see this molecule down here. This is actually uh, benzoyl peroxide. Um, when you use this, you need some kind of radical initiator, um, which initiates the formation of the radical, which allows bromination. Here they're using light as a radical initiator. You can use light here too. Sometimes they'll throw it in with benzoyl peroxide. Um, you can do that. So you would either see this as light or you could use a radical initiator like this. But either way, you're going to brominate at a position adjacent to or allylic to the benzene ring as shown right here. Okay. So the main key here is if you just have a straight alkane, no double bonds, no benzene rings, you're just going to use Br2 and light. However, if you've got double bonds or a benzene ring, you now have to switch to a different brominating agent called NBS, and then you can use a radical initiator. Light is normally sufficient. Sometimes you'll see benzoyl peroxide or another molecule. Okay, so now that hopefully we've gone over enough theory of radical bromination and why it's important, let's now look at the black screen and we're going to look at specific written examples to hopefully gain a better understanding of this concept. All right, now that we've uh, gone over the theory of radicals in organic chemistry, let's actually look at some specific written examples and hopefully gain some intuition on how we can use radicals in synthesis. Um, I will mention this again, even though I've mentioned it in the first part of this video. Radicals are, their reactions are very, very important, especially when you have an alkane. Um, we will really not see any reactions throughout organic chemistry that alkanes can do. And so in order to make them do things, you have to first halogenate them, normally with bromine. And so radical bromination becomes very important for getting alkanes to react. And then we can also um, react them with alkenes in a little bit of a different way. All right, so we've got an alkane right here. So what we would use is Br2 and light, okay? And so what would the predicted product be of this? Well, remember that we specifically brominate at the highest degree position. So we will preferentially brominate at tertiary positions, but if we don't have one, we'll do secondary and so on and so forth. Well, clearly here I have two primary positions, and then in the center I have a secondary position. So I would brominate specifically at the secondary position. So my product would look like this. I would just get a bromine atom at the secondary position. Now, again, the reason this kind of reaction is very important is suppose this was your starting material. You can't do anything with that because there's, alkanes are extremely unreactive. But to radicals, you can get a bromine on there, and then I could you know, do an SN2 on there. I can do a lot of different reactions, eliminations, and then I can force it to be something that is easily reactable to reactions that we've seen thus far. Okay, let's look at the next example. Here we have, uh, this would actually be tert butane. So I have here, we're gonna use bromine and light. Okay, well, I'm going to actually brominate at the highest degree position. Well, now I have a tertiary position in the center, so that's where I'm going to brominate. So my product would look something like this. Okay. Now, you can always have unwanted reactions. You might have some bromination at the, at the um, first degree position, the primary positions, but overwhelmingly, the vast majority of the bromination is going to be at the tertiary position. And that's why radical bromination is much preferred to radical chlorination. Chlorination is nowhere near as specific as bromination. With chlorination, you tend to get a, a much higher mixture of products. With bromination, it's much more specific, particularly when you have a tertiary position. It'll still work with secondary, but tertiary is especially preferred but you would generally do it with secondary in any case, okay? Now, this is when you have simple alkanes. When you have alkenes, you have to be really careful. Let me ask you a question. I'm gonna erase this in a minute because I don't want this. Suppose I just had, um, I had this alkene, I just threw it in with bromine. I don't care if there's light. If I just throw it in bromine, what actually might happen? 
Well, think back to the videos or your lessons on alkene additions. Remember, this is actually an alkene addition reaction. What might actually happen if I throw it in with bromine is I might get something that looks like this. Remember, that is a, uh, it's an anti-addition reaction, and I might get something like this. So even if I threw it in with light, I mean, I might get some uh, monohalogenation like I did up here, but I'm going to get some of this, which I don't want. So as a result, when we have double bonds of any kind, we have to change the reactants a little bit. And I went over this molecule a little bit in the first part of this video. When we have double bonds or aromatic rings, we actually have to use NBS. NBS, remember, stands for N-bromosuccinamide, um, uh, and we're also going to use light, and this is only able to donate one bromine, and so we won't get bromine addition reactions. And also, we're going to specifically brominate at a position that is adjacent to the double bond, or allylic to it. So this is going to be the potential position we're going to brominate at, because this carbon atom is adjacent to the double bond, not part of it. So it'll go right here. So my product, if I do bromination, would actually be this. So here's my double bond, and then the bromine atom would come right off of that. Okay? So I selectively brominate at a position allylic to the double bond or adjacent to it, not part of it. Okay? In the next example, I here also have another double bond, so I'm going to have to use NBS and bromosuccinamide and light. Now, I have two potential positions that I could brominate at, okay? I have this position right here, which is adjacent to the double bond, and I have this position right here, which is adjacent to the double bond, okay? Which one of these is going to be the selective position for bromination? Well, the highest degree position will be. This one is clearly primary, only has one carbon group attached. This one has three carbon groups attached. This one is tertiary. So this position will actually be selectively brominated more easily than the one on the left. So my product, if I brominate once, let me make that a little better, will actually look something like this. Okay? So there you have that. All right, so this is when you have simple alkenes. Let's look at when you have aromatic rings. So here my first one, I have ethyl benzene. I'm going to use NBS and light, so N-bromosuccinamide and light. All right, and it's the same kind of rule. If I use NBS and light on, some, on a carbon chain that comes off of an aromatic ring, um, I'm going to brominate allylic to the benzene ring, or adjacent to the benzene ring, not on the benzene ring, so I would not brominate there. No, I would not brominate there. Um, where I would actually brominate is right here. That's the position allylic to the benzene ring, or we would say adjacent to it. So my product is actually going to look like this. Okay, so that's my product. When I use NBS and light on ethyl benzene. Let's look at one more example. All right, so now I have two carbon groups coming off here. Let's find all the positions adjacent to the benzene ring, or allylic to it. Well, this one is, that's coming right off of the benzene ring, and then right here also. So I'm gonna use NBS and light. All right, but will this position on the top be brominated? The answer is no. The reason it won't be brominated is because this position already has four carbon groups. One is to the benzene ring and the other three are these methyl groups. So when you have actually, we don't see these a lot, but a fourth degree, a quaternary atom, those will never be brominated by this, okay, never. This one is primary, so that will clearly be brominated. So my product will actually look like this. This is left unchanged. And then right here, I'm going to have a bromine coming off like that. Okay? So hopefully this gave you some intuition on radical reactions. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Um, there really isn't a whole lot to radical reactions. We're going to go over um, in the next video some more things on like the radical chain reactions, some more mechanistic stuff. Um, but in terms of being able to predict products and synthesis, this is pretty much all you need to understand right here. There's not much to them. Thank you for watching this, and we're going to cover more topics later. Thank you.